The pronghorn antelope of these vast western prairies is in fact not an antelope at all. Instead, it's the sole member of its own unique family. And it's an original American. It evolved right here on this continent. Most of the other mammals with hooves that now live in North America migrated here from Asia by way of a land bridge. By comparison, the pronghorn originated here. Its ancestors lived here at least two million years ago. Other creatures of that era, including its major large predators, have long since vanished. The pronghorn alone survived into the 20th century. In this land of many predators and few hiding places, it developed phenomenal speed. This fascinating creature, fastest in North America, is with us today because it was born to run. The moment of birth is brief for a wild mother. The pronghorn looks a lot like a deer, but it's unique in many ways. Only minutes after their first breath of life, umbilical cords still attached, the twin fawns are up on their feet. Yet it's hard to believe that these wobbly newborns will soon run at 50 miles an hour. Their first drink is the most important. The doe has produced a special milk for this first meal, and it triggers the fawn's rapid growth. The slightest smell could attract a predator, so the pronghorn mother keeps her fawns clean and free from odor by licking away their waste. The fawns select their own hiding places, always apart, and the doe moves away to feed. She'll stay near her bedded fawns, but not close enough to reveal their hiding places. For its first week, a fawn hugs the ground. So strong is its instinct to lie still that not even biting ants can force it to get up. fawn is deceptively fragile looking. Not many babies could survive when drenched by rain and left alone. But through the wet and cold prairie storms, I never even saw one shivering. Other animals also raise their young here. The coyote sometimes preys on pronghorn, so the pronghorn stays alert. They're light eaters, nibbling on grasses, forbs, and sagebrush. It's a matter of survival on these open ranges. They cannot eat too much at one time and become overburdened by the weight. The fawn nurses several times a day, and these are the only times it stands up. Their keen vision keeps them alive. Their eyes are among the sharpest of all North American mammals. Alone, on these vast plains, 
the tiny fawn seems unbearably vulnerable. But its hiding behavior and its complete lack of odor protect it well. Incredibly, the coyote cannot detect the fawn just a few feet away. Until it can outrun predators, this is the fawn's only protection. The coyote continues hunting. It has picked up the scent of an older fawn. The doe does not appear to be a threat, but then this coyote may have never met a mother pronghorn before. Trying to keep between the hungry predator and her baby, the doe is tense, nervous. She attempts to distract the coyote but it closes in. Run, little fawn. The coyote was born to kill. You're just a baby, but you were born to run. Mother charges. Stunned by her attack, the coyote releases the fawn. Freed, it races to safety. It's not long until mother and young are reunited, but they won't stay together long. The fawns grow up fast. Theirs is among the shortest childhood of all large mammals. My brother Marshall and I continue to explore the short grass prairie.
Water always attracts animals, and the pronghorn come down to this stream once a day. He's trying to do some recording. Pronghorns make a peculiar snorting sound when they're alarmed or frightened. Her call alerts the rest of the herd and they bound away with their rump patches flared in warning. A white-tailed doe joins them. All this frisking and romping strengthens the fawn's muscles. Even adult pronghorn, when they've taken care of the business of living, can be playful. the grass turns golden, the bucks lock horns in serious combat. The females, with tiny spikes for horns, watch. The fights are for breeding status. This one, though, is more of a sparring match between unequal partners. The bigger, older buck on the left is training the younger one in the rituals of battle. I think that's an interesting thing. This one piece will make 52 layers. Watch on mobile devices or the big screen. All for free. No subscription required. In real combat, the winning buck will collect a harem of 2 to 12 does, according to his aggressiveness. Some kind of survival mechanism must influence the female's behavior. She teases the buck. She lets him chase her until she catches him. It's as if she's saying, show me how fast and strong you are. Her selective mating guarantees strong pronghorn for the future. Not every mating produces perfect offspring. The books I read said there was no such thing as an albino pronghorn, but I happen to know there's at least one. Over eons of evolution, their horns have changed shape. Eventually, the animal we know today came about. Its horn is really a horny sheath. Underneath, there's a layer of soft hair, and under that, a bone core. This pronghorn buck has just shed his horns.
However, the black covering of hair over the bone core is never shed. And so it looks like the horns are always there, just smaller, which is why many people never realized that the horns drop off every year. It's hard to determine exactly when they'll be shed. But it looks to me like the old horn sheath is itching or irritating this buck. Members of the antlered kingdom, like deer, annually shed their antlers. Different in composition than horns, antlers grow directly from the skull and are nourished from the outside by a blood-rich tissue called velvet. Horns, on the other hand, grow from the inside over a bone core, and all other horned species, like mountain goats and bighorn sheep, retain the same pair for life not the pronghorn. It's also the only one to have horns that fork into prongs. This and the annual renewing of its horn sheath are unique features that have placed this non-conforming species in a class by itself. Since this is the only pronghorn I ever watched while it shed, I don't know if they all go through these contortions or not. I guess sometimes the horn just drops off. The horns themselves are extremely durable. The many we found in our months on the prairie looked weathered and worn, as if they were at least several years old of the millions that once thundered across the West, only a few hundred thousand remain. Pioneer meat hunters almost wiped them out. Now modern sport hunters want them back. Designed for speed and endurance, they can maintain this pace for miles. Their open mouths do not mean that they're out of breath. They're taking in extra oxygen through their huge windpipes. These and their oversized hearts and lungs give them the edge, even over man and his machines.
They struggle now, but will run free later, after being transplanted by the Colorado Division of Wildlife. Transplanting, along with restricted hunting seasons, has gone a long way toward renewing the herds. This fragile miracle is a miniature of what might have been. Shortly after mating, a doe carries from three to eight embryos. No one knows why. Perhaps it's a holdover from prehistoric times when pronghorns had litters of young. Early in the pregnancy, all but two are expelled. This survival insurance means that the remaining two grow strong. It lives fast, but not long. Just as the pronghorn is born to run, it's also born to die. The average lifespan is only eight to 10 years, even shorter during a harsh winter. By the end of the season, many in the herd fall to starvation. This yearling died in a late snowstorm. It was so close to the green grass of spring. It now has no use for its warm coat of hollow insulating hair. With specialized muscles, it could adjust its hair to suit the weather. Everything about it is directed toward survival. For further speed, it has no dew claws, the extra little toes that deer have. And its slender legs are actually 10 times stronger than a cow's. There's bitter irony in the fact that this is the time when many pronghorn die, when spring is only weeks, sometimes only days away. Yet, even in death, the pronghorn returns to the grasslands that once strengthened it and nurtured its birth. As one returns to the earth, another is born. This new fawn carries the promise of its ancestors toward the horizon of the future. The pronghorn is a true survivor, ancient and modern. Not only did it evolve during prehistory, but it also survived recent history a time when man drove many other animals into the mountains. Today, the grizzly, wolf, bighorn, and elk are all gone from our prairies. Man has allowed the pronghorn to remain because it poses no threat to his livestock or agriculture and because he enjoys hunting it for sport. If we let them, they can continue to prosper and perhaps even reclaim more of their historical range. The pronghorn is a miracle of natural design, beautiful, everlasting, and from the very beginning, born to run. I'm Marty Stauffer. Until next time, enjoy our wild America.